Welcome back for week four update. Uh, so Isidro didn't get a lot of video this week of Oricon. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, one is he came up to Northern California. Uh, for th it, it took three days, like a day to drive there and then a day there and then a day to drive back. So missed three days of training for that. And then he also said that it's just a bunch of boring, same stuff, same stuff. <laughs> so he didn't want to record it. So this is all he recorded for me, this and um, something else you'll see a little bit later. Uh, so this was uh, later in the week, and this is the first time we have two round pins. Uh, one is that bull pin that you see with the kind of gray siding, white metal, metal rails. And then there's this one that's um, kind of out in a big pasture, which is kind of nice because it's, it's like getting them out and you know in the open but not quite uh so it's a good transition because our large arena right now doesn't have a fence yet so that's a work in progress so he's transitioning him to eventually get out there and um he's just he's such a cute little horse uh he's trying to get him to be a little more forward um and and you can see where he's you know struggling with that a little bit um he kind of gets scooting, gets a little bit nervous. And I, I silenced the video because it's really windy. So there's all this wind noise. Um, and Isidro is just recording with his cell phone. So uh, you're going to hear a lot of wind. And so I just, I just muted that. And he's just working on steering and changing direction. I think here he's trying to get a lope. And Orakan just gets really nervous and confused and he's not quite sure what he's supposed to do. And he's asking him and asking him and he's making a smaller, smaller circle because he wants to stop. And sometimes when you bend horses to a stop a lot, they learn to uh, try and bend themselves to a stop when they get nervous and scared. So poor guy. He's such, he's got so much try. He's not he trying to be bad or anything for sure. He's just not understanding what Isidro is wanting. And he got real nervous and scared there. So Sid was just bringing him back down to to kind of chill and relax and, and uh, take a breather before he starts to ask for it again. And I kind of left this part in here. I mean, he's just um, sitting there for a while. And I think always this is so important is just to sit and wait and sit and wait. And what I always worry about on these, these green horses is that they forget that you're up there. So you have to kind of make a little noise because if they forget you're up there and then you move and they're like, whoa, where did you come from? So um, it sitting and waits good, but you got to be careful with that with these green horses. This is what I like. You can really see them start to kind of relax and release and process and and kind of marinate on what, what just happened. Such a cute horse. I like how he's like, okay, what are we going to do now? And that's actually really nice how he responded. So he just sort of just barely squeezed his legs and he, he walked right off, which is great. And he's, he's showing a little bit of anxiety here. So he didn't ask him to trot. Um, so he brings him back down and then asks him to walk again. Um, not micromanaging and not controlling him. Just if he breaks to a trot, he brings him back down. So, um, and then here, I think he's trying to get him to lope again, and he got a little, a little crow hoppy there. He wasn't quite sure how that felt, but it wasn't like a mean buck or anything. Sometimes this first lope is so hard, and Sidor was really kind of trying to make him go. This is where having a ground person would be handy, but he doesn't, so he's got to kind of work it out. And you can see how Orakan gets super confused. Like, he's like, I don't know what to do. So he's like, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> Poor guy. So Sidro's just trying to be patient with him and just be like, okay, no, it wasn't that big of a deal. We're just going to lope. Um, but he got really, really nervous. And I like how he didn't like explode and lose it. He just kind of, just kind of froze and stopped and 
let him let him know his worry that way, but didn't completely shut down or anything. And so here he understands, oh, okay. And he's learning that, okay, I can move forward and it's okay. And I like that it sort of stopped him pretty quick after that. You got the lope instead of keep pushing, pushing, pushing. Let him know, yep, that was the right answer. It's okay, we can relax again. You got plenty of time to to be able to learn to maintain that lope. I try to cut out little little sections so it doesn't be too long, even though this video is super long. So I think he's going to try and lope to the right now so that, I mean, Oricon kind of understands, oh, it's okay, I can move forward. And I like that he naturally just picks up the right lead, uh, or the correct lead, rather. Um, I mean, he's leaning terribly here and everything, but he's a green horse, and so uh, that's that's expected. It'll get better. We just went forward right now. You know, baby steps, baby steps. And he actually held this lope for quite a while for such a green horse for being his first lope. Uh, he did really good there. Like how Sidro's always trying to move up there a little bit to make sure that he's not freaked out about seeing things move around him and behind him. And the Sidro had to build him a little shelter because we don't really have shelters. We just have kind of shades. So he, he wants to keep him warm so he doesn't get a really furry winter coat, uh, That which is always a problem uh, when you have to train through the winter and then show in January. And we don't body clip, so we try and keep their coat down as much as possible. He'll, he's going to put a light on that, on that um, shed as well so that it'll mimic summertime hours. And then this is the first time that Urukon's ever had a blanket on. And I love how he handles it. Like he gets nervous, but he keeps it together. And his sister has him in an open uh, place so that if, if he needs to move, he can he can move. And uh, he's he's really trying to trust him here. And he, you can you can see that his sister has kind of built that trust with him. Because Urukon's kind of um, saying, okay, I don't know about this thing, but if you say it's okay... And uh, these blankets are, are great because it really helps them learn to have everything touch their body. So this is, he's probably going to end up, because it gets really cold where we live. So we live in northeast Arizona and it snows, we get four seasons, it gets below zero. Uh, so Urukon's probably going to end up having double blankets and also a hood um, to keep him warm. And I like how Isidro, you can see, he's not like tiptoeing around him. I mean, he's doing these straps and, and you know, moving like he normally would um, so that he gets, he realizes that, oh, he's relaxing, he's okay, and he's just, you know, moving like normal because if he tiptoes around him, it makes him more nervous. And um, this is so funny. Of course, of course it would be windy and the wind would be blowing the straps away from you when you're trying to put the blanket on your wild mustang for the first time of course <laughs> this is really funny where he's trying to get the second strap i think he's tightening that first one i think it was too loose um and urticon handled that really well and this is the funny part he's gonna go reach for that other one and of course the wind's like nope Mm -mm. can't have it <laughs> I'm just like this is when the horse jumps straight up in the air nope he just kind of stands there <laughs> oh my gosh little luck a little luck is always useful such a good boy So these videos are backward. This was actually the end of the week um, and they just sort of, uh, I transferred them over backward for some reason and I just, it was just way too much work to fix it. So sorry. Um, so this, what I'm doing here is this horse is super, super goosey. 
about things touching his flank and his butt. Uh, he will freeze up and shut down um, and act like everything's okay if he's standing there. And I found that if I try to make him move, then that's where I get these explosions. And you'll see one of his explosions later on. And I really have to get that fixed uh, before I, I start riding him a lot. Because um, that's not something I want to ride, for sure. So first I started, you can see I almost tried to kick that there. Uh, first I started with that burlap sack. I attached it to the end of a stick and... Um, I had to keep him moving. It was so hard to keep him moving. He would want to stop and freeze up and <gasps> just hold his breath and, oh my God, oh my God, and then explode. So um, if I kept him moving and desensitized him while he's moving, it it's a huge breakthrough for him. He's really having to, he can't just freeze and shut down while he's moving. And so um, I did a ton, a ton, a ton of work with that burlap sack with this, I, I cut a piece of tarp off of my bigger tarp and attached it to the end of this whip. I'm sure it's not the best tool, but I have to work with what I have because I don't have a lot of my stuff because I'm, I'm at somebody else's barn right now. And uh, this really did wonders for him and, and it helped later for uh, when his blanket came because he, he needs to be blanketed. It's starting to get really cold and I don't want him to get super hairy. And, um, so he's uh, doing really good. I mean, it was really hard to keep him trotting. Like I could get him to walk and he would sometimes stop, but he would walk. But if I try to get him to trot um, and if I move that thing, he would just shut down and, and want to stop and hold his breath. Um, and so here I'm finishing the session and I had him, I, you know, drug it around and had him follow it, which was kind of cool. And then I decided to finish with... Um, using this clicker he's starting to actually really follow the target which was kind of cool uh he it seemed to just kind of um without <laughs> no pun intended click in his brain uh that and uh, oh i'm supposed to touch that thing and um i was able to get him to touch the tarp with the target uh and then later you'll see i was actually able to get him to walk forward to follow the target and and um, touch the target with his nose, which was kind of cool that he's starting to really um, associate the clicker and the target and the, the tree and, and enjoying this uh, method a lot more because I want to be able to use it later, as you'll see. And then to finish, um, I just I kind of put a ton of treats on the tarp um, and walk away so that he stays a little occupied. It's doing a couple things, you know, he's staying occupied eating there on the tarp um, and, and not being so afraid of it as well as uh, he's not trying to run after me looking for more treats. And then this is cool. It's always a nice um, point where the horse uh, uh, that I know that I'm on the right track to is that he greets me at the at the you know the door like he's like okay what are we gonna do today and I'm like yes that's so awesome rather than being in the corner or walk away when I when I go in there um, he's he's ready to go and, and do something and so I know that I'm on the right track when I have a horse that's like that especially in this type of uh, environment where we have to do so much training and cover so much ground in such a short period of time so I've had a lot of people ask me about um, how to teach a horse to pick you up at a mounting block, and this is where it starts. Um, so here I, you have to make sure that you get their hind end moving. So he's disengaging and moving his hind end when I tell him uh, just by looking and pointing with the, the whip that I have. I don't even have to touch him anymore. Uh, that's great. That's what I need to happen. Um, and he's you'll see every once in a while he'll kind of swish his tail and stuff and and that will go away eventually um but i am very conscious of it um i that is kind of a, a no uh and it's not a good no and i don't want uh, that to keep going so i have to be very careful when i release that i'm not releasing when he's swishing that tail at me uh, but he does he's done this disengage really good both ways uh, which came in handy under saddle and then i'm just reviewing okay i can move the shoulders too uh, this is very important. You need to be able to uh, do this step. I don't really agree with um, just getting up on a fence and teaching him to side pass up to you without having this uh, foundation first. Uh, it's not really fair to them. It's already hard enough as it is. 
And so um, this was the first time that um, I started using the whip to move his front end, um, you know, from his shoulder to his head like that, uh, just kind of pushing him that way. Um, and I, I barely even had to touch him, if anything. And, and he's really good about uh, pivoting on that, that hind foot. And so uh, baby steps still, I mean, it's not the greatest, but we're getting there. Uh, but he's very uh, responsive to me, and that's what counts. Uh, so that led into working on um, like a side pass leg yield to get him to move over, uh, which is what I'm doing here. And um, he had to, I had to really dial it up um, and increase my pressure a lot more than I'm comfortable with on this horse because like I said he he likes to just shut down and just completely ignore you and act like la 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 nothing's happening um when he doesn't understand or he's um just too overwhelmed and um I have to try and break him through that and so he ended up uh I mean this I worked on this a lot um what you're seeing here is a result of quite a long time working on this getting him to uh, move over. And probably I could have at this point incorporated some of the positive reinforcement to kind of help him understand. Um, but we ended up him getting really soft and really understanding what I wanted and staying focused. He was trying to pay attention to everything else going on around us. There was like dogs and people and cars coming and going and he would lose focus a lot. So now I have a mounting block and first I start out by just walking him up next to it. Um, usually they push their hind in away and want to sniff it. And he actually walked right up next to it, which I was very impressed with. Uh, so I'm just kind of hanging out there and petting him. And I, I have my, my, my treat bag and my clicker, um, this time. So I click and treat while he's just standing there. And then I was like, huh, I wonder what I'll do if I stand up here. And he handled that really, really good too. And I was very impressed with that. Um, so you can see this is what a lot of horses do. They kind of move their butt away and that's fine. I'm just going to kind of ask him first. I reach my whip over and tap him on the butt. He doesn't know what that means yet. So he's like, what are you doing lady? So then I tell him something that he does know, which is move away from my whip, um, on, you know, away from the side that I'm, I'm tapping. And so he understands that. So I just remind him, then I go back and ask him the way, the new way. And he doesn't get it, so then I ask him the old way. Okay, remember, if I tap you here, you got to move over. And then I just rewarded that a lot. I did this over and over. I cut this video up a lot because there's it's just too long. Um, and then here I just asked him to move forward by pulling on the halter and tapping. And the same thing here. I'm just asking him to walk forward a little bit so he's closer to me. And he's like, what do I do? <laughs> you could see him trying to figure it out. And then I just let him know, yep, that was the right answer. I wanted you to come up further. And um, this is important here. I, I walk to him and give him the treat. I don't want to pull him or have him come up to me ever to get a treat. So uh, that's why I went through all the trouble of actually going, walking down and walking to him. He was kind of far away, but it had taken him a minute to, to come forward. So I wanted to reward him for that. And then see... Uh, I just corrected him on the ground. I, sh I showed him something that he does know. So now he's starting to realize, oh, she wants me to stand next to this thing. Um, so whether I can reinforce that on the ground and, and having him side pass over to it or start to come up here. And then I ask him, this is the new way. And I'm tapping on him. And he's just like, I'm not quite sure what to do. And he's moved into it. No, that's not the right answer. And then he gets a little irritated. And the minute he even just, even if he leaned toward me, I might have just released and rewarded that. But now he's like, it's so funny when they first like take the step and you release and you reward it. Uh, that's why I'd like to use positive and negative reinforcement for this is that uh, they're like, oh, and then they get really excited. And I mean, I don't know if I say excited, but um, like the next session after this, like the minute I stood on that, that mounting block, he's like, oh, I know what to do. And he like side passed right over up to it. And I hadn't even asked him yet. And I just thought that was too funny. Uh, so he starts to go, oh, and it just kind of clicks. And it's kind of fun when it kind of clicks. And they go, oh, I know what the answer is.
I hope you all enjoyed that. Uh, Grenya is uh, the best example of an energy conserving Mustang for sure. So we did something else that was a little more his speed and he's really good with obstacles. He just oh, like could right. care less. I think it's awesome. So we played a little bit with obstacles. He's such a cutie. And man, this horse can eat. I'm telling you, like, <laughs> I've been standing there for a while. His head is just buried in there. He's not coming out. He's put on so much weight. He looks so good. And I just can't wait for a lot of that to turn into muscle. He's going to look so different. So I did a ton, a ton of ground driving um, to prep for Isidro coming to put the first ride on for me. And this is why uh, he kept doing stuff like you're about to see right now. Uh, he like he looks totally calm. He looks fine. I'm just asking him to change direction. Everything's calm and pretty, blah, blah, blah. And then, boom, yeehaw, the explosion. Uh, and it, it seems to be when things touch his flank or his booty, um, and he's just kind of like, he kind of like zones out. Um, so I have to be really careful with that. And so I've been doing so much work on that flank and that booty. And we did tons and tons of ground driving. Uh, and then I also got up and down off of him and the saddle a bit too. And then this was so funny. So Sidro shows up and, um, we go, he's going to, you know, work with him, um, the evening that he got there and Grenya was not having it. He was like, I don't know who you so are. Pretty. Don't touch me. Uh, he, and this is why it's so important for, uh, these Mustangs, especially in these makeovers to, to have more than just one person working with them. They really need to know to start to trust more than one person. And so we brought him into the, the covered arena. Um, it's in the evening. I don't know. It's maybe like six or something. And uh, this is the first time that anybody has sat on him. I stood up in the stirrups a few times, but I haven't actually spin. sat on him. And uh, so that wasn't too bad. <laughs> He's got some spinning talent. Um, so I was just grateful that uh, Isidro was doing that and not me. I've had quite a few head injuries and I get dizzy and fall off balance really easily. And it really sucks. But um, so... I think somebody made a comment because I posted this video. They're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. I'm like, dude, for me, I would have been like, I would have fall out. Because I, I just, something like that. Um, I can spin on a rainer uh, and I did okay. Uh, but for some reason, um, like it, anything that feels off balance, because the rainer spinning is balanced and that's okay. But if it feels it off alone, balance, okay. it just sends me spinning. Um, and, and I, and I just like my whole world that kind of tilts. So, um, it's, it's not the safest thing and there's no reason, there's a reason why my husband can't, um, help me out a little bit here. Um, and this was awesome. So the next morning, uh, he got his feet trimmed and, uh, all that work I did on Grenya's feet really paid off. Uh, you could see he can pick him up. He, he handled it. No problem. He was able to trim him. No problem. He said he did great. Uh, I so I'm right really, now, really happy that I spent all that extra time sure? making sure his feet were ready. And of course, the Citro has a lot of skill and patience with Mustangs and stuff, but uh, he, he came a long way. And then a Citro brought him out and um, worked a lot on the ground with him because uh, he just wasn't soft enough in the halter and, and, and really bending. Um, and he worked with him a lot on the ground. And so this is the next morning, and he's actually wanting to... Uh, move off the first day he likes to just sit on him uh and not actually walk off and then the next day is when he actually wants to walk off and you could see how stiff grenya is being there and that's just anxiety he's just nervous so he's kind of he wants to shut down he's a type of horse that wants to shut down so we have to be so careful with that and he tried to get him to go but he wouldn't so i had to walk in there um, and I'm still videoing, but I have a flag in my hand, which Grenya understands. He knows what that means. Um, and so he walked off pretty nice there. And then hes you can see he's looking to me um, just for reassurance because he's like, uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. And so it's nice to translate that groundwork, um, you know, that I've been round penning him. So he knows what those cues mean. So uh, try to make it so it will be a passenger as much as possible. 
and um, he kind of scooted there, but he responded right away to the, you know, to the uh, side pole, which is awesome. I uh, really like to see that. Uh, is he he, it means that, that he's understanding what it means, oh, um, and he's willing to listen to it even through his fear. Uh, and that's going to that be super bouncy. useful for, for us later on. And that, that's another good sign that our training is, is, is where it should be. Stop? Um, that the horse can still be able to keep it together and remember those cues. And he got to meet my kids. Um, these are just two of our kids. We have four. Um, and learn that kids have carrots. And that's a good thing. This is our son, Caleb. Um, fed him a carrot. <laughs> He's so cute. Okay, daddy. And he's Stop really it. digging carrots. Those are his jam now. And this is our daughter, Kira. And um, Kira is actually training a burrow right now for a tip competition. She's nine. And she got to feed him a carrot. And he did so good. <laughs> so it's anybody that can come up and pet your, you know, your Mustangs and, and feed them stuff. And uh, I know people get crazy about, oh, don't feed them by hand. But when they're at this stage... Um, they're so wary of people that it, I, I find it's really beneficial. Um, he's kind of cute. We went end up measuring him, and he's just a smidge under 14.1, so he's a decent-sized little guy. And he got a full bath. I was able to wash his tail and everything uh, so we could do these promo shots, and he looks gorgeous. I was like, whoa, where does that horse come from? And that tail is to die for, and it's super thick, too. Um... And I trimmed it up, and then I, I ended up putting it up, and I'll keep it up until competition. So it'll end up growing quite a few inches longer. Um, but what a pretty, pretty boy. He's got kind of a neat color. So this is uh, his third ride now. Um, and I think Isidro will be going home today. So I think this must, must have been Friday. Uh, and so he, he was going to put one ride on him, and you could see, like, um, going forward to the right, he's a little goosey, and he's strides short with the right hind. Um, and we ended up, and you'll see later, we ended up having a Cairo out and work on him. His right hip is high, uh, and his uh, left shoulder was high. And so we're working on that. He also had a, a stone bruise. I'd found a stone stuck in his foot when I very first could um, clean out his feet. And this is the first time I got to ride him. And um, we had, you know, saddle fit issues. And so this is a, a saddle from our Fred Martin Padilla. This is his barn that we're at. And I borrowed his saddle because it fit him the best. Um, but you could see the stirrups are way too long for me. So um, I'm, which is fine. I mean, I'm, I don't want that for any serious training. But I was just going to sit up there and walk around on him. So um, I'm not really worried about it. I don't really need stirrups that bad because I, I kind of saw what he what he would do. Like everything that I showed you in the video was the worst that he did, which was like a scoot forward, um, but very responsive to the to the side pull. Uh, and so it's that's really encouraging it. And that's why I, I like it to do the first rise because I can kind of see what they're willing to do because they'll do it in those first few rides. And um and it's great to know, okay, so he'll do that, but I have some breaks, so that's good. And I was just really excited and really happy. And um, I, I have to listen back to this to make sure, because I'm like super loud. I talk a lot when I'm riding um, or when I'm nervous. <laughs> and so I'm up there just talking to him and encouraging him. And it's super annoying to listen back to. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like baby talking. It's disgusting. So... Um, Hopefully, maybe I can turn that down. I hopefully you can't hear it uh, through the voiceover. The voiceover will drown it out. I don't know, but I'll go back and check. And if it's if my baby talking is way too loud, I will turn it down. And yes, I am wearing a helmet. Uh, this is a helmet I wear for endurance riding. Uh, it is actually a mountain biking helmet, um, and a lot of endurance riders use them. Uh, they're they're very, very highly rated for some serious crashes, uh, but at the same time, they're very light, and uh, I can't wear anything heavy on my head. I get horrible, horrible headaches if I do. Um, so this is light and airy. It fits my head. It makes me feel like I don't have anything on, um, but I do wear a helmet because I've had multiple, multiple head injuries, um, and I have memory loss and a lot of issues from it. 
So um, I do wear, wear a helmet, especially on the first rides or until I know a horse pretty well. So this bell gave us and I a heart attack. This is our Cairo. This is Kim Doan. And um, she just walks right behind him. And we're both like, oh, I guess you can walk behind him now. And so he handled that great. But you can see we put a dressage whip on his hips. You can see how out of whack um, his hips were. Um, and she's helping him put him back in place now.